I hadn't experienced the Sniper Elite franchise until the Nintendo Switch, but as soon as I got a taste of the first one to arrive, I've been absolutely hooked. But the constant cry from everyone in the comments is, I prefer number four. I hope that one comes across. And developer Rebellion must have been listening because here we are. Originally released for other consoles back in 2017 and then seeing a re-release on Google Stadia at the beginning of this month. Google Stadia, it's the other, it's like a online, yeah. Nah, you're not the only one. Don't worry about it. And now we have it on the Nintendo Switch, and as we've seen in the previous titles, these developers really know how to get the most out of it. Is it a game I did not see being that good on Switch? <laughs> That's terrible. That's the worst ever. Let's find out. This time around, the story set in Italy in 1943 and acts as a direct chronological sequel from the third title. The Nazis have a brand new weapon and reprising the role of Carl Fairburn, it's up to you to go in and take it out. It then opens up to you working with freedom fighters and even the Italian Mafia. Unlike previous games, there are more story segments within each stage, sometimes having the option of talking to different characters with a few more intermission cutscenes thrown in for good measure. Storyline for the most part is serviceable but it's never slick. With such a wealth of literature around World War 1 and 2, I think it's one area they could massively improve in later games. For me, my favourite aspects of story and narrative are actually nothing to do with it. They're the small scraps of paper you'll find on the ground with letters from soldiers home or little snippets of conversations between two guards. These were the ones that I cared about and the ones that changed the way I played the game. In terms of gameplay and controls, Sniper Elite 4 is very similar to its predecessors. You control your movement with the left stick and your camera with the right. You'll be using your binoculars to tag targets, which will then allow you to see them wherever they are. But it was a pleasant surprise this time round to see more of a focus on melee combat. But if you're not a fan of the stealth approach, it feels like going full Call of Duty is more of a viable option this time around. As far as all the games in the series go so far, this is the most open. In many ways, it feels a little bit more like the Hitman titles, where you're given an overarching objective and then let loose within a very open world. We saw the series shifting more in this direction in the third game, but I feel like they've hit their stride with number four, bringing up your map you'll see a multitude of different objectives as well as many more side ones that will net you more experience and a higher score. And once again, in a gameplay decision that would make Vasily Saitsev feel proud, you can use environmental sounds to your advantage to mask your bullet fire. But to encourage exploration, there's silent ammo that can be found in each stage. Glenn and I have spent quite a while playing this one in co-op, and the open nature of these levels means that it's by far the best in terms of that collaborative play. And when you time it just right and one of you takes the enemy out at the same time, it reminded me a little more of the old Hidden and Dangerous series if you remember those. feeling far more strategic. One area that modern games really struggle with is the line between retelling events and glorifying war. And there's an inclusion this time around which I think is really clever and it's that when you're looking down your binoculars, tagging your enemies, it will show you information about that person. It might give their name, a reason why they left home, or a piece of information about a family member. And my goodness, did this change how I reacted with a particularly memorable moment where an enemy was blocking my path and ready to take him out, I tagged him and saw that he was a new parent and just couldn't bring myself to do it. I'm well aware it's a computer game, but this small change rightly puts back the emphasis on the humanity of those that took part in these conflicts. And personally, I thought it was a very clever decision. Other than your main and optional objectives, there are a number of hidden items within each level. And with the stages being so large and open, there's potential here for masses of replayability. There are a number of other game modes to experience here as well such as the survival mode, which makes a welcome return, as well as PvP multiplayer. But I'm going to talk more about that in the value section. As far as gameplay goes, I think the developers hit their target of building an open world sniper's paradise. Most of the aspects are refined, the radial menus for weapon selection work well, the vision cones make a return, and your minimap does a good job of marking enemy locations and their current state of alert. The game isn't entirely perfect. I did experience a few unusual issues, like lying down at the edge of a cliff and suddenly I just randomly fell off and a couple of clipping problems in general with the environment are present but they're very few and far between. It's 
Sniper Elite 4 is still the best in the series so far. It takes an already established formula and dials up the freedom to 9. Played online, I think this is probably my new favourite co-op game. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20 and the controls featuring gyroscopic aiming and allowing you to tweak different axes and things are really easy to use on Switch. Control score 18 out of 20. Visually the game looks really good, but there are moments where you'll see the resolution drop. It's a much more expansive game than the others, and as such there are certain areas like the large dense forest where some dynamic resolution scaling seems to have been applied. The game maintains a very consistent frame rate as you can see, and I experienced no crashes during my playtime. One very impressive aspect is the netcode that they've employed for this. If you're someone that wants to play online, you'll experience something that I find very cool and haven't seen before. When you're playing through the single player, the host is able to save at any point and you can reload as well. It means that when you're trying to be stealthy and work cooperatively, one small mistake won't entirely ruin your play session. You can simply quickly reload. And in terms of load times, they're some of the quickest I've ever seen. If you die, whether in single player or online the game will reload almost instantly and it took a lot of the frustration out of being detected early or making one small mistake environmental and level design are excellent and the x-ray cam looks as good as ever as far as audio and soundtrack goes there's a little bit more voice acting this time around it's a touch hammy but it does the job with tom clark hill doing a good enough job with his old character carl fairburn there must be a reason you haven't taken it out yourselves Weapon sounds are excellent and directional audio is also decent and they've included a lot more variety in what the enemies will say when they're just ambling around chatting to each other which adds a good bit of immersion. One small little touch I really like is how the guards stop and salute when they come into contact with an officer. A nice touch. As we've seen in a few titles recently, the small screen of the Nintendo Switch makes everything look nice and crisp and clear. Frame rate seems to be okay and it's a very nice experience in handheld. Despite a couple of muddier textures, I think they've done a good job visually. Visual score 17 out of 20 and the audio scores 18 out of 20. In terms of value, I'm not really sure how I feel about this one. While I believe it to be the best game in the series, I'm not entirely sure why it's £5 more expensive than the first two releases and why there's a load of DLC that you have to pay for. Look, I get it. Initially, DLC has to be made, these costs have to be recouped, and then the company passes that cost on to the players in the form of season packs, etc. But usually when we have these older versions come across to the Nintendo Switch after the initial release time, we tend to see a deluxe edition with all of the DLC included and that's exactly what I'd hoped for here but it's not the case. You can buy yourself a season pass but you could essentially end up spending £50 plus if you want to get absolutely everything. I don't know, for me it feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. The game can be had physically and I'm sure you'll be able to find it at a reduced cost. For those people that like to know, there is a download size of 6.2 gigs, so it's not the biggest game ever. And it's worth noting that if you want to play multiplayer, you'll actually have to download a couple of gigs to be able to do that. Now, you'll have to tell me down in the comments if that's the same on the physical version, but if it is, it kind of defeats the point of having physical because as soon as the servers go down, well, you're not going to be able to download the multiplayer aspect. Let's hope I'm wrong. Regardless, there is a lot of content here. I just would have liked to have seen the same price as the other two versions and to have an addition that included the DLC. Even if that meant paying £5 more on the offset so that you could have the full package. I give value 15 out of 20. Overall, as expected, Rebellion have delivered once again with the Sniper Elite series on Switch. They've obviously got a good development team working on these titles. It feels the most accomplished of the games I've played so far, and I'm sure you'll really enjoy it if you like the other ones. It gets an overall Switch Up score of 86%. Let me know, have you already picked this up? Are you considering it? Has this review helped? And did you spot the Enemy at the Gates reference? Thanks to our patrons who support the channel each and every month. We really do appreciate it, particularly as times are very tough. But for all of you who leave comments down below, you are awesome. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!